Sandbox is a web browsing app for iOS devices that lets users visit only websites that you pick. The app works great in classrooms or in kiosks and allows children to safely experience the web. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to install Sandbox, how to configure the application, and how to disable Safari on your iPhone or iPad so that users have to use Sandbox to access the web. To install Sandbox, visit our website at floatlearning.com. Head to the App section and visit the Sandbox page where you can get a link to Sandbox on the Apple App Store. You can buy the app and install it from there. When Sandbox first opens, you'll notice a start screen that briefly explains Sandbox and its features. Please read it to ensure your app is configured correctly. You have two ways of configuring Sandbox, and we'll explain how you can do both. The primary method to configure the application is by using the device's Settings app. Open Settings and find Sandbox in the menu listing of all your apps on the device. Here you'll find all the ways you can adjust Sandbox for your needs. This is probably most useful for you if you are only configuring a single device or several, especially if you are a parent configuring a device for your kids. The domain settings allow you to set an acceptable list of whitelisted and bookmarked sites, meaning these are the only sites a user is allowed to visit on the device. Attempting to access any site not specified here will result in Sandbox preventing access to that site and the on-screen display of a customizable message. The next set of options lets you control how Sandbox resets itself. Here you can tell Sandbox if it should ever let the iOS device fall asleep or if the start page should reset when the app has gone idle or been shut off. Resetting would be really useful for you if you plan to use Sandbox in a kiosk setting or in a computer lab. Finally, Sandbox's general settings let you control what users see on the device. For example, you may want to prevent your users from editing the URL or seeing the iOS status bar. These options give you control over the look of Sandbox. The other way to configure Sandbox is by using a property list file. This is useful for system administrators and IT professionals that need to configure many devices at once. That process is best explained with the sample files available at sandbox.floatlearning.com. We also have provided a sample configuration file to help you get started along with the deeper documentation samples. In order to effectively restrict web browsing, you'll likely want to prevent your students, children, and other users from accessing Safari and maybe even other apps such as YouTube. You can do this by declaring restrictions on the device. Another way you can set restrictions is through a configuration profile. This configuration profile should not be confused with the configuration plist we mentioned earlier. To learn more about creating and distributing a configuration profile, visit the iPhone configuration utility on Apple's website. This has been an overview of Sandbox by Float Mobile Learning. After downloading it, be sure to leave a review or a comment in iTunes. If you have implemented Sandbox, contact us to let us know how it's worked for you.